I'm Detective Kirsch from the Sheriff's Office. I'm one of the guys working this case way back when. Okay, along with him. In today's video, you'll watch as a woman's carefully crafted lies come unraveled, revealing a planned out, heartless murder. On May 15, 2007, co-workers of Carl Herrig became concerned when he uncharacteristically failed to show up for work and placed a 911 call to perform a wellness check. Carl was discovered on the floor of his home under a blanket and a tarp where his body had been laying for three days. By then, Carl's wife, Claudia Herrig, had already fled to her family in Brazil, taking advantage of that country's extradition laws. For 10 long years, she was able to evade justice until finally a deal was struck and she was taken into custody. Um, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to sit down and talk to you. Okay, do you need any water? Would you like any water? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Yeah, okay, yeah, why don't we, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that now. Um, if you want water or anything after that. Give me a little water. Okay, you let me know. Uh, can you take her to the restroom, please? Oh, this blanket, uh, That's fine. The officer goes through her rights, wanting to make sure she is clear about the process since she is from another country. Herrig seems to understand and has no problem answering questions. So, you, so you're willing to talk to us without a lawyer? Yes. And you're sure of that? Because it has nothing to hide. Okay, great. 
but I just understand something. As much as I can't wait to hear what you have to say, I it, it's more important for me to make sure that you understand. I what do you're understand my rights. Okay, you understand that. Say you've been charged with murder. I have the right. I have the right to stay silent. I know that. Okay. But I, I, if I want to talk, it doesn't bother me to talk to you. Okay, great. And we're going to get to that. You do understand. There's one more question. You do understand that when you get arraigned, you know what your arraignment is when you actually get formally, that you go see the judge about the charge you've been charged with murder? Yes. They're going to assign you a lawyer. And you're willing to talk to me now without that lawyer around? It doesn't bother me. Okay, wonderful. So I will tell you, Chris, I haven't told him everything that we talked about. Yeah, because you haven't had the, the time. <laughs> it was very short. That was, that was an eight hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> we a lot. So, and I haven't told you 10% of uh, This is the paperwork that I told you. Remember when Tony and I were in the plane talking to you and we said that we would have, there were some things that we had to do that we couldn't ask you questions? Yes. So this is the paperwork that has to be done before we can ask any of those follow-up questions. Yes. Okay. Again, you'll see this is much different than how they do things down there. Everything is, yeah. Yeah. Every, everything is out in the open and above board, and yeah. nobody was trying to trick anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the one thing we need to make sure of that. We are not here to trick you, okay? We are here to make sure, you know, I don't know, again, I'm not, I'm kind of interested to learn how things are in Brazil, but... We can ask me any questions. We're gonna believe me. I'm gonna ask you so many questions that you're gonna be tired of me by the time. No, we're no, I, I, I will tell you this from the, time, from the time that we spent together. It's very important to her. Correct me if I'm misstating this. That you fill in the blanks because she was reading a lot of things in the news and seeing the things that were reported, and she wants to fill in those blanks with things that weren't correct. Is that fair? Is that kind of all this thing started? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. How about we do this? For, can you read right English language? Yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is, these are your constitutional rights under Miranda, okay? This section right here, put those on, please. This section right here, we're here to hear, those are your constitutional rights. And what I'll do is I'll read those to you, and I'll ask that you follow along. Sure. You'll see at the end of each sentence, there's a blank space. What I want you to do is put your initials there if you understand it. Absolutely. If you don't understand it, ask me, and I'll be more than happy Absolutely. to explain it. Sure. Once we get through that, when we get down here, this paragraph is called the waiver of rights. And, and again, I'll read that. And what that basically says is that you understand what your rights are, you're willing to wait for this time to talk. Absolutely. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you take this minute and follow along with it. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. If that's true, then you're there. You have the right to remain silent, but you already told me you knew. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to, talk to a lawyer for advice before you ask too any questions and to have them with you during questioning. You waive that as though you say. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Um, if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If that's true, then you'll hear If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time if you want to a lawyer. Now, this is the waiver of rights. I have read, or have had read to me, the statement of my constitutional rights, and I understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me, and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. I therefore waive my rights and agree to make a statement. If that is true, please sign there. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I cannot, I will not have a lawyer. You know, you will. Basically, this just means you'll talk to us right now without a lawyer press. Sure. You will get a lawyer assigned to you if you cannot afford one. Absolutely. And that will probably happen as soon as tomorrow. Herrick has agreed to waive her rights and answer questions without any legal advice. A foolish move, especially in a murder investigation. But some people think that they can keep themselves out of trouble if they are careful enough or if they believe they are convincing liars. You got to sign that too. Okay, now, what 
I want to do is I kind of just want to start off. It's been a long time. Yeah. Now, what name are you going? Are you going by Claudia or are you going by, what do you want me to call you? Chris. I'm going to call you Chris. Yeah. I'm going to start off just with today's date and time. I'm going to introduce myself. This is all for tape purposes, okay? I'll start out, I'll introduce myself. I'll introduce Bill. Now I'll ask you to introduce yourself. Sure. Okay. And then what we'll do is, uh, you know, I'll ask you your, your date of birth, you know, that kind of stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get into what happened 11 years ago. Okay. And it's been a long, long time. Okay. okay. Today's date is Wednesday, January 17, 2018. The time is 9.36 p.m. Speaking to Detective Sergeant Mike Kinucci with the Trumbull County Sheriff's Office. We're currently in the investigative division of the Sheriff's Office. Um, also present in the room um, from the U.S. Marshal's Office, um, Bill Bolden. Bill, for voice recognition purposes, please state your name. Uh, my name is Bill Bolden. I'm a senior inspector with the U.S. Marshals. Great, thank you. And we are sitting here with, please state your name. Claudia Christina Horig. Claudia Christina Horig. Now, Claudia, you are here. Chris. Chris. She likes this. I'm going to call you Chris. You are here right now. Um, You've been charged, what, almost 11 years ago, you were charged here uh, with, with the murder of your husband. His name was Carl here, is that correct? Yes. Okay, now, in the meantime, you, you just now came back on a plane from Brazil, is that, is yes, that true? Yes, that's true. Okay. Um, now, where you were living in Brazil, do you have an address down there where you were living? Yeah. What you, what would be the address? CLSW 504. I've been there for two days, that's all. It's, it's hard to... That's quite an address. Yes. Chris, what's your date of birth? Um, August 23, 64. Can I make sure you're old? 53. And you were a U.S. citizen. Do you have a social security number? You know what your social is? 1299. Wow. That is an amazing number. That is a good The number! She was impressed with the number. I'm She's impressed with numbers the whole trip. She's a she's a math person. She's a numbers person. Like, no, that's yeah. that's that's amazing. That's shocking. I'm shocked myself now. Now before we get into, I'm anxious to learn about what happened and, and how you ended up in jail down in Brazil. But we'll get to that. That's kind of towards the end. What we kind of we're gonna be talking for a month. Then. We're gonna be talking for a while. Don't you worry. I got coffee over there, so I'll be good. Um, but I kind of want to start at the beginning. I, I, want to, I want to go back to March 15, 2007. Okay, you can start from the, from the end. Well, yeah, well, that, the beginning and the end. Yes. I, so I, I start think, backwards. It's going to start backwards. It's not fair. I so think, uh, in, in fairness, I think what you had already talked to Tony and I about on the plane, I think that that would be a very good place to start because that you, you, you did a lot of the most important things that you wanted to tell us. Whatever you're talking about. Jumped all over the place, so yeah. I don't know if well, I would be able to, to help me. Well, here's what will happen. You can jump all over the place. You're allowed to do that. And then what we'll do is we'll try to rein you back in. We'll try to bring you back in and try to make sense of it. I like to, the way I find over the years is I like to talk, if we talk in order, but like say the day that this happened, and kind of move forward from there, that seems to jog the memory fairly well. But if you, you can you can tell me whatever you want to tell me and then we'll just we'll, we'll go back and we'll, we'll, we'll look for it. What would be easier for you? How about that? Bill. Yes. I know how hard I want to be fair to the family, but I don't want to be unfair to myself. If I say only a few things and I don't say the whole thing, right. I'm going to look very bad. I think that what I would like you to do, and this is entirely up to you, just talk about the things that you talked about with us before, the things that you were already. Although she has been charged with murder, Herrig is strangely concerned with what her husband's family might think of the things she will say as if they aren't already devastated that their loved one has gone without justice for so long.
Well, what if, let me ask you this. If you, All right, this is just correct. Uh, to have, having a piece of paper in front of me and a uh, pen uh, helps me out. So. Now, let me ask you this, Chris. We can do it the way Bill's talking about doing it, if that's easier for you. What if I just asked you to explain, tell you, you know, when we got to the house, this is what we saw. Can you tell us how this happened? Would that, would that be something? No, no, that's not how I'm going to You don't want to do that, okay. No. Herrick is doing everything she can to control the conversation, alternating between professing she doesn't want to upset the family to claiming that she's so upset that she's having trouble thinking. She seems to have no problems until she is asked to do things in a way that goes against her preferences. Now, how do you want to tell me this story? Um, no, I think that I think that no part, yeah. I think what is important is the couple of things that you said that led up to what happened that day. The things that you said when you were talking about how things happened that day and that it wasn't something that you planned in advance, but how it happened and the reason why it happened, the things that you said to him about being pregnant, his response to that, and what happened after the shower, the things that you said, I think that is, that is a very important part of the story, and I think it's I think that's the thing that you need to tell him about, that, that part. Our next date 
was in the island. Instead of answering questions involving the time frame closer to the murder, Herrick goes all the way back to the beginning of their relationship. It might be a delaying tactic, but it provides interesting insight. If he truly was that insistent about getting married and even threw an engagement party without her knowledge or consent, then there were disturbing elements in the relationship from the start. That he was engaged to me. And everybody said to me, oh, Chris, congratulations, congratulations. And I was like, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know what they are congratulating me for. But so my engagement, you ring? No, never gave me a ring, ever. First it was our party, our engagement party. Wow. And that day, that day he took us to put in May, his brother, Paul, drove us to... And they were talking my wedding party. I didn't know it was my wedding party that I'm talking about. He planned the wedding without you. Yeah. It was bizarre. But um I was forty years old. It's like this is the man that everybody ever dreamed of. Uh um if I don't marry him now, I'll probably change his mind. So I was pressured into it. So our wedding day, uh, that was it. We met three times and then we were going to Las Vegas. Wow. Wow. That was, that was quite pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. That was so good. That was That's what started everything. We started talking about that and we were all looking at each other just amazed. That was, Usually it's the other way around. Usually the women plan it real fast. That's usually the way it happens. No, no. no. Yeah. We put a lot of pressure into me. And uh, the thing is that uh, he didn't pay for a thing. He always forgot his wallet. Always. I think for all the trips, I, my trip to go to to Ohio from New York. What did you do for a living? Right? I'm an accountant. No. Yes. Um, so I paid for my my mood to bring in all my furniture here. I paid for all the food in the house. I paid for our uh, wedding. I paid for everything in the house. So after we got married, he surprised me. His 16-year-old uh, son that lived in um, what did I say, North, North Carolina right. with his mother, mm -hmm. he brought his son to live with us. So we got married on June 30th of 2005, um, and we, we went to Las Vegas. When I came back, when we, we came back from Las Vegas, his son was in his house. I didn't know him. Living. Okay, so uh, we... we I wasn't working. I spent the month of July at home. I wasn't working. In August, he left. He left for a, a course in Texas. It was a three to four month uh, course because he worked full time for the Air Force. And he decided to, um, and he didn't want to work full time for the Air Force anymore. He went to work for Southwest. Southwest. Full time for Southwest, full time, uh, part time for Southwest, part time for the Air Force. He used to make, he told me that he used to make 120000 with the Air Force. I don't know if it's true. I never saw his checkbook. I never saw his bank account. I never had a joint account with this man. I never saw one dollar of this man's money. Never, never gave me any of his money. Nothing, nothing. I paid all the bills in the house. No, I didn't. He paid.
pay the electric and the mortgage, everything else was for him. For food, uh, clothing, for, for, for him, I bought his clothes, my clothes, his clothes, uh, his son's clothes, everything, going out for dinner, everything else was for me. He bought, paid for those two. So, I remember he told me that with the Air Force he was going to make, uh, the Air Force he was going to make 25000 in Southwest, about 40, I think altogether was not more than 65000 Harry is in painting a very pleasant picture of her husband, but so far there is nothing to justify killing him. Divorce, perhaps, but nothing to indicate self-defense was necessary. You know why? Because he wanted a lifestyle, crazy lifestyle. That's the point of it. I didn't want to expose him. I know, but you, since you talked to me about it, it's something that had, you know, you, you're doing good. And Mike is just as nice as Tony, and we're here. Sure I think it's important. This is an important part of your story. He wanted a crazy lifestyle. Oh doing all kinds of perverted stuff, men, women, everything, everything. And, and for you to have an idea of what lifestyle he liked, he was addicted to a, a TV show called Miles High. You will look it up with uh, YouTube. It's about uh, pilot school.
again, like I said, I already have to report the things that I heard because that's that's my obligation. That's my that's my duty. So I'm going to have to report those things. So I would much rather, with with Mike sitting here, hear them from you so we get it right. Plus, hearing it from you probably helps have it helps help people understand what ended up happening. Yeah. You really enlightened me when you were talking there. I really want you to hear that. I really want you to hear what you told me. Yeah, I have to, to because the story is very long, it has many parts to it. I, I have to summarize it because otherwise we're going to hear you. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you summarize it, then we'll go back and get on the highlights. How about that? Um, so the month of July we spent together. Uh, we, we married uh, uh, on June 30th, and we spent together July. Uh, not really, not really. As soon as we got married in, in, uh, in um, Las Vegas, I paid for the whole trip, I paid for everything. Uh, but I didn't want to be married to him anymore. Right after you got married? After I got married. So I went back to New York. I went back to New York to my job. And because uh, I lied to my boss, and I told her, I was so embarrassed to tell her that I was going to marry a man like that I just met. I was so embarrassed, so um, I wasn't even sure it was going to be. I was so pressured I to do this. At some point, I, I figured that I was going to tell him, let's wait. Barely a month into the marriage, and already the relationship is unraveling. So far, Herrig has said nothing negative about herself. While it is possible everything she has said is true, there is something about her that doesn't ring as quite genuine. But uh, I wind up doing that, but I felt very bad and I went back to New York, back to my work, didn't tell any, anything to my boss. I continued to work and um, two weeks after I was there, he pressured me every day. He said, well, I gave you enough time for you to tell your boss that you're married. If you don't tell her that you're married, I'm going to call her right now and I'm going to tell her that you married me a couple weeks ago. I said, please don't do that. Don't do that because I, it, it's just going to hear it. It's going to hear it from me. I want to give her my version. Um, so uh, he, he gave me that day for me to tell my boss. So I walked in to her office and I told her what happened. Um, so then I had a more job and then I to come back to, to New York to, to, to Ohio and he said, I'm going to change uh, because he treated me very, very bad. Uh, uh, he was like very aggressive with me just because I saw uh, I'm afraid of AIDS. And the day we came back from, from, from Las Vegas, uh, I saw a lot of things on, on the ceiling and on the walls, big hands. And I'm like, I saw screaming. Oh my God, kill those hands. He said, you never scream in that house again. I don't like screaming because you know what a, 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 a soldier does when they hear screaming, they react. They so start talking to me in a way that I, she never talked to me before. I saw kindness here in him before, and then all of a sudden he was a different person. He scared the life out of me. So I, I so told him I'm going back to New York. I, I go back to New York. So I went back to New York to start, continue to work, and then he forced me to do my job. So I had one job and, and I had to, you know. You come I, back. You come I came back, back to, to Ohio. Okay, and, you he, uh, and he said, uh, I, I, he said something very interesting to me, beautiful words. He said, um, you see if I remember my like, said, um, I, you belong in here. Oh, I love those words. The right words anyway. You belong in here. You are my wife, and you belong in, in here with me, by my side. I thought it was so, you know, I love those words. They, they hit me the right way. I thought he was sincere. I thought he was really 
Yeah, and I'm, so, I'm so you came back, and how long after you came back did you start? You said you started working in a, a CP. Yeah, it was about uh, August. I was pregnant. Uh, I I was the baby. Uh, probably. Okay, so you started working there in October. Yeah. How long had you been working there before you ended up going into the hospital and you lost, lost that job? How much time was that? Well, that was uh, uh, in, in uh, 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 February of uh, February of 2007. That was almost two years later. Oh, two years later. Two okay. Years later. So you were working there for a while. You were at the county. You were at the county for a and What led up you to the hospital? Um, yeah, let me tell you about the pregnancy first. Okay. So uh, in July, we were newly, uh, July of 2005, we were newly wed, right? And his son was living uh, in, with us, and, and he, in August, he decided to leave to go to Texas to take a, a, a flight course to work with Southwest. And he left his son. Herod continues to tell her story and has reached the point of her pregnancy. While a baby can strengthen the bond between a couple, in a toxic relationship, it can intensify all of the negative aspects. Now, is this the house in yeah. Okay. His son never saw me before I never saw him. He didn't know it was a serial killer. He left his 16-year-old son with me. I thought that was really weird. Not only that he left me, I was, I had, we had just gotten married. He decided to leave and, and he left his son with me. So that was very, and he left it, no money for food, for anything. I had to take his son to, to school every day. I had a child all of a sudden, 16 year old child. I had to take him to school every day. I had to pay for his food. Schools had no jacket, uh, um, uh, 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 cold jacket, nothing. I had to take care of that boy, and, and I did. And in the beginning, he didn't like me because he didn't know me. But we only had each other. We became close. But um, at some point, he wanted to leave, and Carl started blaming me for his son to want to go back to his um, mother. And I said, no, you're not going to put that blame on me because I have a tape that I record his son telling me that he wasn't going back to uh, to his mother because of me, but because of what Carl did that abandoned him with, with a stranger. And I had a lot of recording about my relationship with, between me and Carl uh, on my hard drive in my computer. That was in Newton Falls. The police has that. That shows his character, all the things that he did to me, how he screamed at me, how he cursed at me, how he abused me. That is all in there. Because in my first marriage, that was married before in New York to a doctor for 10 years, Tom, Tom uh, I had a lot of problems with his mother, and I got into the, bed, into the habit of taping conversations. So I, 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 I had, had that habit. So I started taping my conversation with Carl, with, with everybody. No, not with everybody, just Carl and, and, and his son. So that conversation is that hard drive. Um, he, he had a subscription to a site uh, called uh, Hogtide. Do you know what that is? I looked that sign up way back in 2007. He did that to me. You want to explain it? He forced me into, oh my God. Those are the things that he did to me. He forced me to do that. He forced me to play dead. He would only have an orgasm if I played dead. If I moved one muscle, he would lose his direction. So, in the beginning, when we were dating, 
we didn't have full facts because uh, you wouldn't get any direction because he wasn't playing his weird games with me. Remember that he went one time to New York and I went back to two times to Ohio. So he tried to have sex the first time. He couldn't because he didn't get any direction. Then later on, I started using um, are some fairly wild statements, and she might not realize that a lot of what she is saying can be checked. Medical records can be looked up, as well as internet and credit card history. Also, women from previous relationships, including his ex-wife, can be called on to confirm his typical behavior and actions in a relationship. He always started doing this hard time to me after we got married, and I didn't like these games. Because, like I told you, I'm a very conservative woman, yes. right? So, but uh, I went to leave him when he started with that. But then I said, gosh, I already lost my job. Starting, you know, accounting for all the stuff that I, that I... Left in left. New York, that you lost, yeah. and you gave up to move here. I gave up, so yes. So you decided to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. Uh, maybe... Maybe I'm too old-fashioned. Maybe I should uh, be more modern. Maybe I'll get used to it. So um, he beat me, and, and next to the bed, police was there. Police could see the bed was here. Here's the door to the to the, to the, to the was, here's the door to the bedroom, and here in this corner he had box with things that he tortured me with ropes. Um, the whip, uh, the vibrator, uh, had all those gadgets. So, um, and uh, he only had sex that way with me. Either he would tie me up or uh, he would... Um, um, I would have to play dead, or uh, or he would scratch his penis on my feet until he was bleeding. It was all weird stuff, and he made me walk around naked in the house on the high hills all the time. It doesn't matter how cold it was, um, you know, because even if you put the heat on, that's dumb. Yeah, that's still cold. All, all strange things. Yeah, you know those uh, uh, high heel things with the pump. Pretty, I, I felt like a hug, and, and, and that's 
just not me. So I had to, uh, I couldn't put on socks, I couldn't put on uh, pants, I could on, put on uh, a jacket. Um, people went out uh, to, to eat. There was no one out like this. I always had to wear uh, open shoes. Open shoes, open toes. Shoes with, you know. So it was torture. He tortured me. He is a fetish, obviously. Yes, yes. Yeah, there is one little you. particular one that I, I don't feel comfortable telling you. And you don't have to, okay? There's one very, very bad one. And if you don't have to tell us anything, you're not comfortable telling us. I think at this point, everybody, we have a very good picture that there were some fetishes and there were things that you were uncomfortable with. Yeah. And it was that or not. And it was that or that not. That was that, that or, or hell. Help. So cursing. Uh, uh, he never only beat me up once, but uh, that was the day that, that happened. Yeah, that, that was, was the only time that he beat me up. But he would abuse me verbally. Do you? I have something to tell you. I'm crazy. He went crazy. He said, "I never want to be a father. I never want to have children." Because you're going to ruin your body. I love your body the way it is. You're going to get stretch marks. Like his first wife got a lot of stretch marks. And I don't want that. You're not going to do this to me. I want a wife. I don't want a mother. I don't want children. I want a wife. And I said, but I'm 40 years old. I, I can't. I, I'm not going to get an abortion. You will get an abortion. So I went to uh, see him in Texas. I went and made a, a trip there. He didn't let me talk about this, this right, the, uh, the deprivation uh, technique on me. So he, he, and before that, over the phone, he would call me all neurotic, crazy. You gotta get, get an abortion, you gotta get an abortion, you gotta get an abortion. So he would talk to me all the time about that. So uh, like I was going crazy. When he came home to spend a weekend or a few days, I don't remember, a week, he got a week off for a few days, he, he wouldn't let me sleep. And I begged him, I, I can't, I, 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 you, you're killing me, so you would keep me up. And Herrig's story becomes even more disturbing as she describes his sexual abuse and his insistence that she get an abortion. With the way she is describing him, it's almost impossible that he has no prior history or complaints against him. He would stay on bed, sitting on bed, and I would lay down and fall asleep. He would wake me up. Wake up! Wake up! So he would do that all the time. And I got sick. After a few days, my body just couldn't take it anymore. I got sick from the mental pressure, from uh, the, the mental torture from sleep deprivation. Uh, I wind up in the middle of the night, uh, I felt pain, and I said, I don't know what this pain is. And all of a sudden, I have blood all over, and then he took me to to a hospital, and I did the ultrasound, and they saw, uh, you are losing the baby. I'm going to try to save it, but we don't know if we're going to be able to, to save the baby. But um, um, just, she did the ultrasound and said, I don't see the fetus anymore. It, this, the sack is empty. Um, go home and rest, this and that. Uh, but then when I got home, I was the fetus inside the, the toilet. And it, uh, I, I heard that big much. So I saw the blood and I stuck my hand with the fetus. I was very emotional to the fetus and put inside a, a, a little a glass jar and I showed him he didn't want to see it and, and I put it in the freezer. I said, I'll put it in the freezer because I want to bury it. I want to bury the fetus and um, uh, he went into the freezer and, and threw away the fetus. So cold. If you do away with the fetus, I want to keep it. Uh, whatever, bury it in, in, in the yard. But it, that hurt me a lot because he was. That meant nothing to him. 
meant so much to me and meant nothing to me. And then I went into the hospital to do the, um, what did you clean up? You were sick. So um, uh, I went into surgery. So I don't know the name of the hospital because I'm not familiar with names and I would not remember any names in the living years. But uh, I'm sure that my insurance that was from his insurance has all that paperwork. They, they could, um, uh, you could see that my story is true. So, um, uh, so after three or four months, his son went, went back to his mom and uh, the, our time together became a, a little bit better. I, I was more used to, to his abuse, um, but uh, he did a lot of, a lot of bad things to me. He, he went, I wasn't allowed to talk. His mother doesn't talk. Mother, uh, a geisha, geisha. You know what a geisha is? No, I don't. Um, Japanese is a woman that wears that, those uh, that, that dress and she serves the men. She, he wanted me to be like that. Very abusive of his first wife. She left him because of that. Um, Carl Herrig's first wife disputes this claim and says that her ex-husband was a loving father and that the two of them remained friends. After his death, there would be no reason to lie out of fear, so it makes Herrig's story more difficult to believe. She loved him, um, talked with friends. She, she said that she, she confided that in me. His daughter also confided in me that he was abusive to his, mom, to his first wife. And that was the beginning of his depression because he has he he had aspirations of becoming a politician, and he felt that after that he couldn't be a politician anymore because he didn't have the perfect house, the perfect wife. The, so, and then after that he had a, a second wife that was a, a, a Peruvian woman uh, that looked like me. That's why he married me because I look like the second wife. The woman Herrig is referring to was never the wife of Carl Herrig. He loved her deeply, but wasn't ready to commit to marriage when she was, and so the woman broke things off. Carl regretted his choice in less than a year, but she had moved on. Herrig does resemble her, and perhaps she resents being a replacement. That um, he left her because she wanted to have children. And he simply took her out of his house and dumped her at the airport. So he ruined this woman's life. She, he got her to leave her job in France. And, uh, and then she could go Did you talk to her? He told me. No, no, I don't know. Her. He, that, those are stories that he told me. So um, I don't remember the name. Uh, um, Carla. Um, so uh, he left her because she wanted to have children. Um, uh, he was abused uh, toward women. In oh, he met, uh, yeah. He married this Car Carla who was broke, didn't speak any English, zero. But she was perfect because all he wanted was a body. He didn't want a, a person for him to talk to. And what he didn't like in me is because I spoke English. He wanted a woman to be like Carla, wife number two, that didn't speak any English and that he knew could Why didn't he just keep her then? Because she wanted to have children. And I told him. to do with that? Yeah, and I told him that I I didn't want to have children. He loved them, and I did. But I became pregnant. And that and becoming pregnant the first time, based on what we talked about earlier, that becomes a very important part of the story about what happened. Because that, right? That that becomes a very 
but that's the center of well, that's the center of everything that becomes a very important part of the story that's the center. so you understand the Maybe based on our conversations early that, that's a very important about yes. what happened and i uh, in and i confined in in our in my neighbor her name is ella ella is the neighbor she lives in the house across the street he cried and this man wants you to avoid he's now right about that This doesn't really add up with what she was saying earlier. In a relationship where a person is controlling, they don't allow the other individual to have a separate bank account. They control all the bills as well to strip that person of their independence and feeling of safety. I had to be invisible and silent. So after a while, that probably wears on you. I couldn't. Even. For this little time that you're talking to me, you know that I talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, we've talked a lot today. Yeah. We've spent a lot of time together today. Yes, exactly. I, I couldn't. I have an opinion on things. Right. Did that stuff would kind of lead up to the depression? That yes. They yes. Because I'm a woman that I can talk about medicine, I can talk about politics, I can talk about psychology. I do. I can talk to you about uh, um, uh, the end of the world, whatever we want to talk about. I will talk to you about um, I have a lot of interests. So I, I, I have a lot of things inside my head. I read a lot. I, I, if I watch TV, I'll, I'll watch the news. I, I consider myself a nerd. I, I, I never drank. I never had drugs. Um, I don't have tattoos. I never went out with girlfriends. I'm from work to home. You're very intelligent. Very smart. And yeah, we thought we yeah, we talked about that a lot in the flight. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. But he didn't appreciate that. I do. Well, that was a a, a, a problem. That was my a, a defect. That was you don't know what the problem. Probably went through the depression. Yes. Yes. The the abuse. The the, the in, in the tapes on on the computer, you see how he he, he called me a bitch. A, um, um, very bad words. Women, super women, uh, son of a bitch. Words that I don't speak. No, th these words are not part of my vocabulary. Um, I'm conservative. I'm a religious person. Um, so I'm not modern. I I I don't like to go out partying. I you know, like to take care of my home and I like to work. I I always work at least 14 hours a day. Herrig has gone off on a tangent, listing all of her positive qualities. It's almost like she is trying to be her own character witness. Um, and I work always work seven days a week. Um, that wasn't the problem. I worked in the CPA firm. Right. Seven days a week. And I, and I know that when we were talking earlier that we lost that child, that was the most devastating. That was the most devastating. So we had two years ago, oh good, um, um, I got pregnant a second time about a year later. 
a year later. So August 2006. About 2006, I got pregnant again. And again, he did the same thing to me, the same torture, the same torture. And that uh, that was, the, uh, then uh, that was a very bad time for me because I bothered him because I was wrecking his body, my body, his body, the one to him. I started to gain weight, um, and that wasn't good. Um, gain started, weight as a result of the pregnancy? Depression. Of, of, of losing a, a baby for the second time, I okay. became so depressed. You have, you, so you lose the second baby because of the same because the same things were going on as happened the first time a year exactly. prior. Exactly. Okay. Yes. yes. He depression. thought I was, I was uh, purposely trying to get pregnant. I was, I didn't even think I could get pregnant anymore because when, oh, right, right? I didn't think I, I could get pregnant. Um, and um, if you were so concerned about me not getting pregnant, why wouldn't he use a preservative, right? Con, right? So he wasn't so, I was married and I didn't see a problem with that. Um, so I, I did, because I didn't get pregnant, it was weird. I didn't get pregnant uh, before him. Uh, but then I, I thought that was, I think that happened once, that wouldn't happen again because it didn't happen again. Now like you told us earlier, there's medical records for the first time. Did you go to the doctor the second time? No. Mom? No. Okay, so in 2006 there won't be medical records, in 2005 there should be. There should be. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, and after that things start spiraling out of control. Right. Yeah, but um, we kind of were, uh, he was in love all of a sudden, he was writing me little letters, calling me all the time. Things got better after, I think we got used to each other, the first year, uh, it's not. Yeah, because you didn't date long, so yeah. it, it took a while to get used to each other and get comfortable. Exactly, and his son left, which the two of us, right. we sort of dating, right? Um, then I got pregnant again, and he got very, very angry. I mean, he thought I was setting. No, 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 second time. And then, um, and then, that was, then uh, uh, he thought he thought I was setting him up. Yes. Is that kind of what he thought the third time? No, I, I thought. Oh yeah, he was. He became very psychologically disturbed. He was drinking a lot. He was um, uh, not doing well in Southwest. Now what time frame we talking about? After August 2006? No, we are back in December of 2006. We, we, we now um, three months before. I was just make sure I understand because I don't want to I want to make sure that what I remember is since she has brought up the Southwest, the detectives will most definitely be contacting them to see if there were any issues in his work history. Showing up drunk, signs of depression or aggression, anything about the relationship he might have said to a co-worker, and anything else that might shed light on his mental state. Because these are things that I'm saying now that I didn't the day, the day that, yeah, the day that everything happened at the house, I'm getting to that first time you told him you were pregnant for the third time. I was afraid that I was depressed because I was afraid that his reaction would be the same reaction that which, he had. Which, which, it, which it was. Right? Which it was. Yes. It was even worse, worse, worse. because he, he, said he was going to adopt his daughter's yeah. baby. You know what? Can you tell Mike so kind of cover that again? Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. I can't, I okay. can't sit here and tell you what you said. You know what I mean? Yes, I mean, it, it yes. Is, I mean, well, yeah, uh, you wanted me to jump into that part. No, I mean, I just, I just wanted to make sure we were, yeah. I wasn't putting words in your mouth. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, that day was a Monday. So, what happened? No, okay, I'll, I'll go into that day. That day was a Monday, and he got home about 9 or 10 in the morning. Now, which day are you talking about? I didn't want to tell him over the phone because he worked. He uh, he 
stayed home one day and three days out of the house with the with the South. One day and a half and two days and a half he would fly. So I found out I was pregnant and I got very nervous. So I became depressed. I, I already knew he was not gonna accept the pregnancy. So I I had a, a plan. If he doesn't want to accept this pregnancy, I'm gonna kill myself. Because I'm already fat, I lost my job, um, uh, I'm 42 years old, and, 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 and I'm not gonna have an abortion. There's nothing that's gonna make me have an abortion. And he doesn't want a child. What am I gonna do? Kill myself. So I had a plan to, I'm not gonna tell you my plan yet. Let me just get into this pregnancy. So he got home, and I, I, I already had this plan to commit suicide. He doesn't want the the, the, the pregnancy. I'm gonna kill myself. Um, and then we talked. He got home, and, and I said uh, I had a pregnancy test inside my pocket. I had a coat. Um, a gun for suicide is believable. However, one does not need a laser sight unless the intent is to kill something or someone else. Let me say, um, on Thursday, I was 
Thursday. He not, uh, okay, here's Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday was the day that he died, right? So, I think on Wednesday, I knew I was pregnant. I took the pregnancy. That, that day, I, I, that week, I, I knew I was pregnant. took the pregnancy test. Maybe it was a few days before that. Um, so I knew I was pregnant, but I didn't tell him. He was, he was on his trips. Um, the whole month. Uh, so he one, two, three. I don't know if he was on that day. But I, I knew I was pregnant. Um, so so on I, Wednesday of that week, you find out you're pregnant? Hey, it's, you know, be, between Monday and Thursday, between Monday and Thursday. Sometime that week. Yeah, I, I, I found out I was pregnant. Okay. But I didn't tell him because I was afraid. Um, so I thought, if that man doesn't want me to have this child, I'm going to kill myself. Because uh, I'm not going to have an abortion. So what did I do? Uh, there was a file. There was a file on the, the internet called uh, the su suicide uh, suicide um, the suicide. And you told me you found us uh, 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 ways to commit. Yeah, and, and the, uh, between the years of uh, between 2000 and, and, and four or five. It was all over the news that uh, uh, people could get on the internet a file that would tell all kinds of uh, step by step how you could commit suicide. So you were searching the internet for, for possible ways to kill yourself. Yeah, and and that file is even saved on the ha hardware, okay. on the hard drive, hard drive. The hard drive. Okay. Okay. Um, and the, the 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 best way of committing suicide was with the gun. But the downside of killing yourself with a gun is that it has a recoil okay. that most people that try to kill themselves, they, 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 they lose part of their face, but they don't die because you aim here and the gun will do like that, like that, and, and you wind up not, not dying. But that's the, the most successful way of killing yourself. And then there's jumping You found a way around that. Right. Well, what, so uh, I, tell me about that. Yeah, then I thought that was, um, because there were other ways, um, poison, jumping off a bridge, uh, of a building, um, uh, um, what do you call it, heat, the heat, the, 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 the gas, the, the, the stove on, in many ways. Um, so I thought that was a good way because um, they had guns. They saw comments in Ohio. That would be easy, right? right? And not so painful. So what I did, but I had a problem. The recoil thing bothered me because if I just uh, get my face ripped off and I don't die, I'm in the worst place, right. right? So what I do, I went to the uh, um, gun, gun, gun uh, store, the gun store, right? gun store. And I, I, I asked for a gun that was small enough for my hands, and I wanted it with the laser beam because I wanted to shoot to see what that recoil was. As far as excuses go to explain the laser, Herrig's reasoning is pretty weak. It's highly doubtful that the detectives believe her, but it's best to let her back herself into a corner as much as possible. Slug Masters, would that sound about right? Slugs, yes, yes. So they, they they helped me to find the right gun for, for my hand, the okay, small hands. And I said, um, um, what, what does, uh, explain to me about this blazer um, uh, um, or or I said, I don't want to buy a laser beam. So just tell me the whole package. So I bought the whole package, and I went to... Uh, Why do you want the laser beam? 
Well, I'm going to explain that to you. I went to a uh, 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 fire, firing range, right? Because I want to shoot the, to understand if I uh, aim the, uh, at that, that point, how uh, much more above that point you would hit. So you did a little just, research on this. I mean, obviously. A lot. You understood that there could be a point where the laser's yes. hitting and the bullet's not hitting in that exact spot. You researched this on the internet? No, no, the beating came from my head. From my head. Okay. That was yeah, obvious. You knew that there was a chance that that bullet wouldn't hit exactly Yeah, the because the article said about the recoil. Right, the article you were reading. The article That's said okay. about the recoil. So uh, I was concerned about the recoil, so I had to understand about the recoil. I said, if I go to a shooting range, when I aim in that point, and if it shoots like uh, one, uh, one, um, one um, inch above or two inches, I will know how much I have to adjust it to lower it to hit where I want. So I did a few, did the, I don't know how much ammunition I bought, but I, I, I was there for uh, just one hour. And I became very good at it. It's not difficult. It's not that hard. So I, I, I was hitting the, 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 the target, and I said, well, that's fine. Now, facing the gun that way, it's easy. What about facing the gun sideways? That's totally different. That's not going to work. How are you going to see where the laser's hit? You see a little... Uh, you can do this. How do you see where the laser's hit? No, you, you didn't get it. Yeah, because that's, that's where I was fascinated. That's where I was fascinated when you told me about the thing. The laser beam is not for killing myself. The laser beam was to understand the recoil. What is recoil? She wanted to see if she pointed it here. If I pointed it here, okay. it would hit here. I would understand how much I would have... If I want to hit here, actually I have to aim it here. So the laser beam was for me to understand what is recoil, what's the distance. I get what you're saying. Okay. It's not accurate, but I get what you're saying. Makes sense. And I, 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 we understand. You can't. Here's what I'll tell you. Because I can tell you this now. You can't control recoil. Okay. But I only figured that out late after I did it. Okay. Yeah, she actually told me that, that she figured out that she couldn't figure it out. We I actually yeah. teach that stuff. That's why I was, right. was going to teach you real quick. Right. So I said, that's not good. I just figured, I, I paid to learn that that won't work. Right. That won't work. That won't, work. That won't be no good. So what I do? Did you find out you were a good shot in the process? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm an athlete. So um, I'm good with the sewing. With, I'm very good with my hands. Mm -hmm. So I'm good from hands. So that that was that wasn't hard at all. Shooting is not hard. At least not from at a range. So what did I do? I said, yeah, that's very 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 easy to shoot uh, straight, but not sideways. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with my hand. I cannot practice shooting that way. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. So I went home. And my husband had um, um, tools to work with uh, wood. He was an artist, but I, so I went there and I needed a piece of wood. So with, with a hole in the middle. And I think that I, I, would, um, I would screw that to a door frame. I went inside a closet. I did that in his daughter's room. Inside a closet, and I screwed that in, in, in the air. I cut a piece of wood that would be the size, the size of the, the opening, right? I screwed that in. You did that all yourself? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I got a C. Yeah. Okay. I got a C. Yeah. Um, and I measured. That hole is going to be the Again, her convoluted process doesn't make any sense. She's putting so much time and effort into killing herself with one particular method when it would be easier and faster to move on to something else. The setup she was describing was discovered in the closet, but it didn't go off. It is unclear whether she put it there to give her story weight or if it was a trap she planned to use on her husband. 
Find that on the internet? No, I'm smart. Yeah, you know, you know, she, you know, she, I'm not stupid. Well, Chris, here's what I'm going to tell you. Hmm? I'm going to sleep better tonight because for the last 11 years, I've been wanting to know exactly what that piece of wood looks like. <laughs> yes. No. I, I, honestly, I, I have, that has baffled me for years. No. Come on. Yeah. Not something you see every day. But there's a chair right there. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this again. We'll talk about we'll it. We'll go back to that. Right, I, but now, I, I, now I can sleep. <laughs> okay. So my plan was never, not for one single minute, to kill anybody on my Swear to God, there was not for a single minute I thought about it. But that man was stupid enough when he saw me, when he came out of that bedroom, that he saw me. I was drunk. I waited for him for almost an hour. I was drinking. Well, he's in the shower. You're drinking. I'm drinking. He gets out of the shower, comes out of the bedroom, what happens? Well, Chris, here's what I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep better tonight because for the last 11 years, I've been wanting to know exactly what that piece of wood looks like. <laughs> yes. No. I, I, honestly, mm -hmm. I, I have, that has baffled me for years. Mm -hmm. No. Come on. Yeah. It's not something we see every day. But there's a chair right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's get back to yeah. that. We'll talk about this again. We'll talk about it. We'll go back to that. I, I, now, I can, now I can sleep. <laughs> okay. So my plan was never, not for one single minute, to kill anybody. On my swear to God, there was not for a single minute I thought about it. But that man was stupid enough when he saw me, when he came out of that bedroom, that he saw me. I was drunk. I waited for him for almost an hour. Well, he's in the shower. You're drinking. I'm drinking. He gets out of the shower, comes out of the bedroom. What happens? Then, um, with my coat on, a little bag in here, and run inside. Walk all over the place, drinking, and waiting, nervous for him to come out of the room. And, um, so I think it. Very shocking for him to 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 shake him up about this pregnancy. So I think, oh, I know, I know. Um, I'll wait for him. He opens the door. I'm right here. In my head. So that's what I did. So when he opened the door and see me with the gun, he saw me with the gun to my head. He would have no no reaction. He would stand. Keep staring at me. Staring. All of a sudden, he doesn't move and he grabs the gun and grabs my hand and keeps holding me and then he just throws me up against the wall. I fell down because there was a door here. That was the door to, to the... Oh, you know the house. There was the door to the, uh, to the bedroom and there was the door to a middle bedroom. Right? I'm trying to remember, but yes, I think I remember what you're saying. And there's a third bedroom where is um, his uh, daughter's uh, bedroom. That's where I have the the thing. And here's the third bedroom, which is where I have the. the and the steps are over here going down. Yeah, the steps are right here. Right. Okay. Right? So when he comes out of the room, I'm right here. Come back over here so I can see it. My bright eyes. <laughs> yeah. So um, and he he stares at me. I thought he would have some emotion to his face. He had no emotion to his face at all. Nothing. He just at me, and then he grabbed the, the gun in my arm at the same, no, and, and, and my neck at the same time. And then, then he just threw me, and I fell, and I felt that uh, uh, I, I hit my head against the, the, the door frame. For someone who was drunk at the time, she had an impossibly detailed memory of an event that happened nearly 10 years ago. Most people will recall the main facts, but will be more hazy on things such as the exact timeline of each move. Trauma, as well as unusual alcohol consumption, would only add to this. Of that bedroom, middle bedroom, and I just stayed there. 
and we start talking. And he said, um, no, he stopped talking. He wasn't talking to me. He said, um, that's a very uh, uh, good idea, but just do me a favor. Let me leave, it, leave the room and uh, go to the basement to do that because you're going to splash my, my paintings. You're going to splash blood all over my paintings because down uh, that step, there were three paintings, and he's uh, a collector of, of paintings, he was. Um, and, and I got very angry. If he had said that, I would be dead, he would be alive. What happened then? Well, what happened next? The guy that got very angry and I got up real fast and I shocked. Shot what? I shocked uh, the, the, uh, at him and that uh, I was lying down. He was going. Come back over here, please. Please. Yeah, I was please. going. I, I was lying down, right? I got up real fast and I shot at him. It was so. He wasn't too far away. It was close. Was he down the steps? Where was he? He was going down the steps. Maybe he was on on. The, the third step, and it was here, right? You're right at the top of the steps, top corner. Yeah, the steps are here, right? Her story is not matching up with evidence or other statements made to the police. Carl Herrig had previously told his ex-wife that his marriage was not working and that he was going to be getting a divorce. He had already rented a house and police discovered a packed suitcase in his car. Here's the door to the master bedroom. Here's the door to his son's bedroom. Here's the door to his daughter's bedroom. Is there a bathroom in here? There's a bathroom in here, yes. He, 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 he saw me here, then, then he threw me here. I had my head here. I was here. So when he threw you down, you didn't lose control of the gun or anything, or he didn't take it from me? No, he didn't take it from me. So when he saw, uh, when, when he said, he's uh, here, I, I got very angry. I got very angry. And if he had not, not said that, I would, I would, he would have lived. And I would die. have died. I would have killed myself. So they're telling you to go down there, change the whole thing. Change the whole thing. Change the whole thing. It you was a mad? very, yes, very sensitive. You're still mad, I can tell. Yeah. It's very emotional. This is... This is exactly what you told us when we were on we there. When you're telling me, you're telling us now exactly the same thing that you told us before. I said, look, I didn't say a word. I just thought it was too quick. I'm going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die with us. The two of us, we're going to die here now. You and the baby? Yeah. You and the baby? Yes. But those were not words that I said. It was too quick. Just what you were thinking. Yeah, I thought and I acted, you know, real quick. Did you stand up? I got up real fast. I was maybe like, like, like just like this. Mm -hmm. And I just got up real fast. And what did you do next? I just turned around and just turned around and I shot. And after but I my feeling, it was uh, my my impression. My right. impression is that. Uh, the, the gun had five shots because I had had a little drink. My feeling is that I had shot him three times and I saved two bullets for myself. So after I shot him, I ran inside this third bedroom and I sat in the little uh, chair, I sat in the little chair as hard as it was, I pulled the trigger. It was the hardest thing I ever done in my life. It was hard. I pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. I said, my bullets. What happened? I pulled the trigger the second time. I don't know where I got this trigger. Three times, and I said 
drew holes for myself. And what happened? I got confused. So there's a, uh, let me uh, put new holes in. Maybe bad holes. I don't know. So I I ran down, down, down stairs uh, to the basement. And I don't remember was when I was going down or going up, back up. I, I, I realized what I had done. And I tried to see if it was alive. I, I put my, my I, I took a stove and I tried to see if it was breathing or, or vice versa. He wasn't. Um, so I'm going to finish up with a story. So I think it was my on my way down. Yes, it was my on my way down. And I, I said, no, it's done. i got to finish up with a story. Again, she is giving too much detail, with not even a single pause to pretend that she is trying to recall exactly what happened. Each action along with the corresponding thought flows seamlessly, which makes it sound rehearsed. Of course, she has conveniently left out the tiny detail that three days before the murder, she had wired nearly $10,000 to her father in Brazil. But they hadn't told me that. In the meantime, while my father and my sister were talking, they put um, uh, my sister's uh, uh, husband on the phone talking to me, and he's a pastor, and he started talking to me about hell, going to hell. Don't do that, don't kill yourself, because you're going to hell. Da, da, da. He didn't say anything about uh, death penalty, they only talked about uh, going to hell. about hell, I gotta kill myself, I wanna die, I wanna die. Um, they said, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And then my father um, um, uh, got him, took the phone and he said, uh, do you know where your passport is? I said, yes, I do. Where is it? I said, it's the bank. It's in a safe uh, in, in, in a bank. And uh, do you have money? I said, uh, I have a credit card and I have 1300 in my bank account. He said, go there, get money, and get your, get your passport, get, uh, and, and you're going to come to Brazil. I said, I can't. I can't drive. I'm drunk. And, and they have coffee in the house. I do. Make strong coffee and, 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 and drink uh, coffee that you're going to come back. I said, I can't. So uh, he convinced me to do that. I went to the bank, went to the safe deposit, um, and that was only under my name. My husband didn't have access to that. It's only under my name. Uh, so I, I, I... Where was that bank at, Chris? Never before. Remember the name of the bank? Up, yeah.
uh, but I spent thirty thousand dollars because it didn't work for a while, and I was buying food for the house, I was buying clothes, and we were traveling. You know, I paid for all our meals, going uh, out to dinner. So I spent thirty thousand easily. Over two years, I spent thirty thousand. So, I, but I still have ten thousand dollars. So, um, no, 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 I didn't have uh, that day. I didn't have the ten thousand dollars anymore because on Thursday, when I decided to uh, kill myself, uh, when I was prepared to to kill myself, uh, I said, I have ten thousand dollars. If I'm going to kill myself, I'm not going to leave this ten thousand dollars to him. I'm going to give it to my father. So on Thursday, I transferred ten thousand dollars to my father. Uh, if I was uh, did planning, you call him to tell him you were going to do that, or did he know that money came? I I, I did that uh, once in a while because I, I support uh, uh, family members. Once in a while, I I I don't remember if I, I told him. That. I probably did. I probably did. Uh, but he was. Did you tell him why, or that was just more? No, 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 no. Um, got a bigger I, transfer than but I wasn't sure if I was going to kill myself. It was just in case I killed myself because I hadn't talked to him. I was hoping that on Monday we would straighten things out. Well, would that have wired that money back to you if you wanted it? No. So you were out ten grand one way or the other. No, no, that money was for my sister. You know, that money was money that I gave uh, often to, to my sister. So you were giving it your, was last, just, your, la your last money you were giving away to your sister. Well, but, you know, it, it would good go to good use because uh, instead of me buying money every couple months, every three months, every six months, uh, you, that money would last a year, you know, to support yeah. my, my sister. So I, I wired that money to him just in case things didn't work out on Monday. I wired the money. If I was planning on going back to Brazil, uh, first of all, I would have bought an uh, 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 airplane ticket, which I didn't. I bought the airplane ticket in New York on Monday afternoon, which confused when I got to the bank to get um, the things out of the safe deposit box. That I thought, oh my God, I have 1300 in the bank account. They won't know that I killed my husband. I was paranoid. So I only got a thousand and left uh, 300 in the bank account that is still there to this date. And I was, I was, I was confused. I was paranoid. So I went to the, um, um, to the, to, to the clerk and I, I got a thousand dollars out of cash and I got things out of my safe deposit box, which was uh, my passport and my uh, my diplomas from school and birth certificate um, and marriage certificate documents. Supposedly in a panic, she is able to think of all the important papers she will need to flee the country. Combine this with buying a gun with a laser sight in wiring money to a country who will not extradite their own citizens, and this becomes a hard story for a jury to swallow. And the money was not there anymore because I had transferred it on Thursday. But on this Monday, after I killed him, I went to the bank and I got my stuff. If I was planning on doing this, I would have gotten things out of the safe deposit box before I killed him, not after. Right? I know where you're going with this. Right. So, um, so I, my, my father go, he encouraged me to go there, get your stuff, and, and, and you're going to fly to Brazil. But I don't know, it's a long trip from, from New York to Pittsburgh, which was the airport. And I'm going to help you out, and I'm going to try to buy you the ticket with my credit card. But if you, if, if things don't work out, you, at least you have a thousand dollars and you have your credit card, you're going to be able to get a ticket. So um, I was able to get a ticket with, I think, with $900, something less than a thousand dollars. He wasn't able to use his credit card. Um, so, um, what was he getting it? Uh, he left it. 
the bank, and it, it's the same thing as what you told me earlier. When you left the bank, you drove to. Oh yeah, I left. Very the bank. slow and very careful. Very. I was like a zombie. I was. My father was talking to me, to trying to, 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 to encourage me. So I, because I didn't even know why I was driving. My life is over. What's the purpose of me doing this? But one thing kept going through my head. I want to say goodbye to my family. I want to see my family. Because that idea of committing suicide hadn't left my head yet. I, I thought, if I get to Brazil, say goodbye to my family, I still can keep, kill myself. And I tried to kill myself the, that day that I got to... to, to um, and how did you try to do that? I went to a very expensive... Uh, um, a very expensive hotel in Copacabana. I went to the highest, uh, uh, I think it was 19th floor, to the highest um, uh, apartment that I, that I, that I could um, uh, get. And I had a credit card. And I said, give me the most of it. The, uh, then I, that was all the limit I, had, I still had, had left in my credit card. So I uh, went down and I said goodbye to my father, uh, I, he, he picked me up at the airport, uh, I talked to him, I, I told him it was, I did this horrible thing, and I don't want to be in the house because I don't want to involve you in something like that, uh, because we thought that uh, if the police found me in his house, he would be arrested, that's not true, but at the time we didn't know how things worked. So I said, I'm not going to get you involved in this. Uh, I just want to say goodbye. Uh, we cried. We said goodbye. And he said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't, I'm not going to tell you. Where are you going? I'm not going to tell you. But from from the way I spoke to him, he knew I was playing on doing. And I said, don't try to stop me. Uh, I have to do this. So we cried, and we said goodbye. And I went into this very expensive um, What I was gonna do is that I was gonna sleep a little bit and and then wait until night because I didn't want to to make a bad make a very bad scene and I figured that at night I wouldn't have the risk of falling up on top of someone and, and killing an innocent person so um, I waited and. Once I got to the room, I called my father. I said, Dad, I, I, I'm fine. I, I, I'm in a hotel room uh, in, in, in Copacabana. Um, I said, I, I love you, something like that. Fine. Um, then I went to sleep because it was still after me. Half an hour later, the phone rings in the room, and it's my father. I said, get into trouble uh, uh, by having you in my house. You can come with me. And I said, Dad, no, yeah, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna take care of you. I said, really? Uh, and, and my father was not very loving. He was never very loving. It was my, he said, you're my daughter. And he said that. I can never, my father never said that to those words. You're my daughter and I love you. Eric's actions don't match those of a person who is truly suicidal, especially with all of the research and effort she claims to have put into choosing her method. She is slow to act and easily talked out of it.
This is a prime example to show that if you can't fake cry convincingly, you shouldn't even bother. The moaning and growing is very controlled and her shoulders never even shake. Her eyes are not red and there is no blotchiness to her skin. While she is making noise, she is very careful to keep her head down or her face covered with the tissue, blocking herself from the camera. on him 
because uh, he he wanted to be become a, a politician and his dreams were ruined. Then the law, the uh, uh, not having custody of his children, he was very frustrated because they were fat and they wanted to be skinny and they were not because they they, they, they he wanted his son to be a sports boy and he was a computer type of person who wanted to, who wanted to play um, games uh, and he was he didn't work out he was fat and his daughter was also fat there was a problem with him he wanted the perfect wife the perfect house the perfect kids he was obsessed with that things were getting out of hand um, left his he, 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 his first marriage didn't work out. His second marriage with Carla Del Castillo, the Peruvian woman, didn't work out. And he, he was obsessed with her because he talked about her all the time with me. It was crazy. And I, I looked like her. That's why he married me. And made me uh, even uh, dye my hair black because he wanted me to look like her. Um, uh, and then um, uh, his son left, didn't want to be living with him anymore. Um, and then um, there was the pregnant thing, the pregnancy thing, and um, he was doing, he was not doing well at Southwest. All those things started finding out in his head. He became depressed. Oh, and there was the thing that he thought he had prostate uh, cancer, and he tried to get money from um, the um, military, the Air, Force. the Air Force, and they denied uh, his retirement and denied the settlement. So you can also check those records. So something we, we didn't touch on, I, I think probably just because you got a little bit more time. Um, after, after you shot him, you were pregnant. What happened with that child? I lost the baby in you Brazil. Lost that baby. I couldn't eat, I didn't eat, I didn't sleep in Brazil. I I was I was very sick. Was that while you were in Sao Paulo at your father's? Sao Paulo? No, my father I landed in Sao Paulo from Sao Paulo I went to Rio. Okay. I stayed with my father for like I guess four days. Okay. And then from from Rio I went to Brazil and I didn't leave anymore. So when you, when you went to that when you lost the baby in Brazil, did you go to a hospital there or a doctor? No, because I was afraid to give my name and be arrested. It was very not good at there is no record of the second pregnancy either in America or Brazil. It isn't unreasonable at this point to at least consider the possibility that she has made it up to enhance her story. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of that too because I, I'm really, really interested in what happened after. And I, I'd like to know how all that worked. Um, one more, another question. At some point, did you try to buy, now you told us about the revolver. At some other point, did you try to buy another voucher? Yeah, I tried to buy another gun. Um, tell me why, or what it was, or where you tried to buy it. Or tell I, me everything. Uh, I thought that that uh, gun was not. Uh, I don't remember exactly the reason why I I want to buy a second gun. Let me try to think. Um, that was a big one. That was a forty-five, if I remember it. Yeah, uh, I think he convinced me that, um, I don't remember the reason, the guy at the, uh, the firing, firing the range, range store, yes. What he was trying to tell you that that might be a better gun for you or something? No, I started inquiring. I started inquiring. Because the internet searches you were doing? Yes, yes. Okay, so you, were, you actually tried to buy it, just the purchase didn't go through on your credit card, right? Do you remember? Um, I, I figured. I, I I think I figured that 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 first gun, it was good. It was a good gun. I didn't need that, that other gun. It was good. Okay. So all right. I thought something happened. Your credit card didn't go through or something. To find you. Maybe I'm mistaken. Like I said, it's been a long time. I don't remember. 
No, I, I, uh, I think I, to be honest with, to be honest with you, I don't remember why I, I wanted to buy the second gun if I thought that one would be more efficient than the other, and, or maybe because I shot with with a gun similar to that gun, and I thought it was better. Oh wait a minute. I think I, I tried that gun and I thought it was a good gun, it was like, yeah. You know, How'd you try it? I think she let me fire uh, with a, a similar gun. So somebody at the range lets you shoot once and you wanted to, you liked it so you were going to buy one. The fuel, the fuel, I thought it was. Uh, Did it have anything to do with any kind of, you remember having any conversations with anybody about like knockdown power or anything like that? What's that knockdown? You know, like the power of the bullet, like, like what it would take to actually put somebody down if they were, you know, if you're trying to shoot? Do you recall any of that? No, I never thought of anything like that. All I remember is that uh, when I wanted to buy the bullet, I wanted to buy that bullet that ex ex exploded. All of one? I don't know the name of it, but that, that opened. Well, because, why do you want that? Because if I want to, to, to kill myself, I wanted it to um, um, not to just go not to any harm, to do big harm. And you were buying that gun for what reason? Tell me again, why were you buying the gun in the first place? The first one? Mm -hmm. To kill myself. Yeah, that's why I made that, 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 uh, that hole in the, uh, in the wood. Trying to convince anyone that she bought the first gun to commit suicide is a stretch, but trying to top that by saying that she was going to buy two guns to commit suicide without actually going through with it is beyond belief. Right, now, you were very descriptive in what you I remember why I want to buy a second gun. Well, it may have, as you're talking about that, some of that stuff's kind of sparked in my memory to make me think that maybe you did shoot something at the range in somebody, but I thought there was something about maybe, you know, a bigger bullet, more knockdown power. I thought I remember hearing something about that, but I, I couldn't even say. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the only thing I remember uh, was that I want to buy a bullet that would uh, um, uh, do more harm or open inside your uh, your body to 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 do more damage. And did you, where'd you learn that about that? Carl. Carl, Carl he told you about the bullets. Yeah, he told me. Did he teach you how to shoot? I mean, did he? Yeah, he shot in, in the house. He, he uh, taught me how to shoot um, um, with a... Um, help me out. With a long gun, shotgun? Yeah, shotgun. Okay. Did he have handguns in the house? Lots, yes. So why did you go by? If you had... Because I tried to commit suicide several times. You didn't let me get into that yet. No, no, what I'm saying though is if he had guns in the house... Why because I tried to get to kill myself with a gun, and then when he found out, he took away all the guns from the house. Okay. How did you, how did you fail? How did you not kill yourself? I got scared. I, I changed my mind, and, but I told him that I tried to do that. And then after that... No problem. Now, I want to go back to, you remember very vividly, you, you kind of drew out the, the layout of upstairs for us. I mean, you were, you were pointing the gun in the direction that you thought you would have been pointing it back then? How many times, so he comes out of the bathroom, and I just want to replay this, because this is the, and we'll touch on a lot of different things here, but the, this is nuts and bolts bit. Yeah. You're drinking. You're upset because he doesn't want you to have, now he knows you're pregnant for the third time. He doesn't want you to have that baby. He says, I'm taking a shower, we'll talk about it. So you're trying to, you're going to make an impact. You want him to see that you're serious about this when he comes out of that room. Yeah. And you're standing there with that gun to your head. And he comes out. Kind of stares at you for two seconds. Him. Not only does it not phase him, once he tosses you on the ground, he says, What? Go ahead. Just don't, yeah, don't mess just, up my stuff. Yeah. Because my stuff's more important than you. Right? Yeah, like that, but this is a You bounce up off the ground. Yeah. After he shoves you down, what, what does he, what's his action after that? Does he start going down the steps? The first bullet knocked him. 
What's that? The first bullet knocked him. Not him? Knocked. Not knocked. Killed him. The first one. The first one killed him? The first one. He fell down. He was going down the stairs. Like this. Like in his one foot. I remember his one foot did like this. He fell down. But there was not that, that sound like. Uh. If she had to answer this question at all, it would have been better if she had claimed that it all happened so fast that she was too upset to check how many shots she had fired. One of the flaws of giving a detailed story is that there are more points for the police to break down until the narrative crumbles completely. No, no. In my head, I, I counted three bullets. In my head, I counted three bullets. So in my head, I knew there were five, so plus three, plus two, two. So okay. when the bed, I only need one to kill myself, right. but I had two. Because in my head, I, I, I. All right, we're gonna get back to that. But there, so he shot three times. In my head, I, sh I, I don't know if I hit him or not. Okay. In my but the head, first shot, you know, I mean, you, you In the first him. shot, I know hit him because I saw how he fell. And you said you know it killed him. He went right down, his foot buckled. You're describing how his no, foot No, it buckled. looked like it, that one, it looked. I don't, I didn't know. It looked like, I didn't know for sure. It looked like the first one was the bullet that, that killed him from the, the, the way he, he didn't make a sound. So, uh, that's what I think happened. Now, regardless of the number of shots you actually fired or what you think you read or what, what have you, where did you fire? Did you fire all the shots from upstairs or did you go down to where he was at the bottom of the steps don't remember. and shoot more? I don't remember that part. It happened too fast. Because one thing I'm going to tell you, I'm going I'm to I'm let out what you probably read on. Do you remember reading anything on the news about the coroner's report? I read a few things. Do you remember anything about a contact gunshot wound? No, I don't know. Do you understand what, that is. what a contact gunshot wound is with all the research you've done about suicide? Contact? Contact. Must be contact. Close. Yeah. In close proximity, very close. Yeah. He had one. Of those. It's possible. It's possible that I hit him once. I don't remember. I'm saying that it's possible. I don't remember. I cannot say okay. something to you that I don't remember. And I wouldn't ask you to. Right. But it's possible. I remember very clearly the first one. That I remember, the first one. And then I know that I shot him 
two more times. I don't remember if it was Tata or if I went, had the, went down to shoot him. Okay. I don't remember. But it's possible that I did. Possible that you did? Yes, it's possible. So it's not out of the realm of possibility? No, no, it's not. Because what, what could have happened there, I mean, you're mad, right? I mean, basically, he just told you that his, that his paintings are more important than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So you're pissed. After remembering everything flawlessly all the way back to the beginning of their relationship, she's suddenly starting to have memory problems. Yes. And I, I think most people would be in that. Yes. Right? Yes. So, we hit him, he goes down, you get on the bottom steps. Is he still moving? Is he still breathing? No, no, he was already not moving because okay. he didn't make that sound of, uh, you know, nothing. So, it was too fast. It's like I'm saying. I don't remember if I went down and shot two more times or if I shot from the top, from the top of the seat. That part I don't remember. But I, I know I shot three times. That's what I remember. I may have shot five, but I only remember three. So it's possible. Anyway. And it's very possible that I shot five times because I told you that when back to the room to shoot at myself and the world, it, it, the world, uh, uh, I, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So I was baffled. I, I was confused because in my head I had shot, I had shot three times. Not five. Not five. But it would make sense that you shot five because it makes sense. the trigger twice, nothing happened. Right. I got very confused. So I, was, I don't have that much experience with guns. And I thought, the bullets are bad. Maybe they failed. There was a problem. They were bad. Uh, there was a bad manufacturing, there was a manufacturing problem with the bullets. So I got to go back to to the basement and, and, and change the bullets, put new bullets in to go back and, and kill myself. Uh, but in, in the meantime, I think it's when I'm going down, I don't remember if it was going down or up the stairs. and having time to put in uh, five new bullets, I came to my senses. And when I went up again, and I saw him there, and I, I realized what I had done, and I took up his pulse and, and checked his breathing. What did you do next? When I saw that he was not breathing at all, I went running back into the bedroom to shoot myself a third time. That was when it was, um, not, the reason why I didn't shoot myself the third time was not because it was hard, it was because I thought of my family. I got you. Makes sense. Yeah. I get you. I wanted to tell them. Now he was covered up. Why'd you cover him up? See, yes, because when, uh, when I, um, uh, I went back, I'm familiar. You used to live there. Yeah, and and I got there. Um, 
um, I don't know, probably 2, I don't know, before 2 p.m., around okay. 2 p.m., and the flight to Brazil was only 6 at night, so I had plenty of time. Four hours and I wasn't in a rush to, to, to get to JFK. I was in a rush to get to uh, New York because the flight to Brazil was from New York. Okay, so that's that, that's probably not uncommon to fly to LaGuardia and then just have to get a cab or a friend And or I didn't have money for the uh, uh, for, for the ticket. I right. had to fly uh, with his uh, flying privileges. Um, as, as a spouse, I, I could fly with the, I had flying privileges. Well, that's for both flights? No. Just the one to... Just the message. Just, just the one to Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you head down there, check in the hotel, and just stay with that. At what point does this start setting in? This, this is really interesting. By now you know what happened. You know what you did. It's all coming together. Yeah. What's going on down in Brazil? Well, I tried uh, to, to, I wanted to kill myself. I had a fixation. I wanted to kill myself. So when my father told me those words, they moved me a lot. And I wanted to enjoy that a little bit more. I wanted to prolong my time with my family as much as I could. So I, I, I was saying a long goodbye to them. So I, I enjoy, I, I, I spent those, I don't know, the ease with which she claims to put off suicide has to be a slap in the face to every person who has desperately pleaded with a despondent loved one and struggled with the fact that their words had no effect. Herrig keeps saying that she wanted to die and went to all of those elaborate lengths, but then expects us to believe that one brief phone call from her father changed everything. Three, four days, and uh, he said, uh, well, I, I talked to your siblings and they think it's better that you don't stay here with me, you go to Brasilia because there are more people there to cheer you up. Here's just me and you, you're too sad, you don't talk, you don't eat, you don't do anything. So I, I think there's a better environment for you as a I have no more. He said, don't worry about it, we already got you a ticket. So I went, I, I went to Brasilia and I, I had an apartment there and that my, my, my sister lived in. And I just I stayed with my sister. She had kids and more people. And Did everybody down here know who you were and what, what was going on up here? Did they know about what happened? My whole family, yeah. And they took care of me. What about the people of Brazil? I mean, did you just blend in down there and nobody really knew what was going on? Or no. That hit, didn't hit uh, the, the news in there for, I think, a year or two. Yeah. So, um, um, so they just che cheered me up. They tried to cheer me up because nothing with the... Uh, and then I tried the, the same thing that I did in the hotel in Rio. I did in Brasilia four times. I went to the... Um, uh, another uh, hotel. I went to the 13th floor and I tried the same thing, but um, for some reason things would not work out. So you would be required to jump? Jump. Yeah. So I spent all the money that, 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 that I had uh, going to those hotels to try to secure myself. So I, I figured out that it would be very hard. Kill myself that way. I just didn't have the courage to do that. I, I would find excuses. Um, uh, I would wait too long, and uh, things just didn't work out. And I was running out of money. So I don't have any more money to keep going to hotels. And I had a little um, piece of land that I had from many years before, from twenty years before. Um, I went back to Brazil, but there, there was no construction there. So I, uh, I, I, th that ten thousand dollars that I gave to my father would gave me all back to me, and I was living off of that money. 
but I was spinning it all, and I was spinning it like water because I thought, I don't need money, I'm going to kill myself, why do I need money? I, I'm going to expensive hotels, try to kill myself, and, and then I, uh, I bought, um, I was running out of money, but I, I, I think I still had the four, four um, I had a thousand left. I, I spent a little bit of money real quick, and I bought some, some wood and some bricks and put to, to build a little shack and I bought a little um little little um Volkswagen little because I thought another way to commit suicide was to the uh, exhaust of the car. So I figured I would get um a car in, in that room and I would get it running and I would take some sleeping pills and I would die from the, um, um, from the yes, carbon monoxide. Um, then um, I had a problem because it, when the uh, beetle was inside that little shack, he made so much noise. You couldn't fall asleep? No, the neighbors. The, <laughs> the neighbors would walk. Uh, the neighbors would hear that, that noise and, and go there and try to find out what was going on. So I figured that I would have to wait until um, some festivity day, carnival, someday that would have a lot of music going on for me to, to do that. So as I kept postponing and postponing, uh, I, I was... Um, getting better, like the stronger psychologically, um, and and um, and I met my husband there. And you got married again, down there? I did. Yeah, that's so you really did. I did. Right. Uh, I've been married for eleven years. Really? Yeah. So from the time you got down there, you basically got married right away. Yeah, to a guy that worked in the construction store uh, that helped me build the shack. He was a um, what do you call it? Non-educated man, a very. Um, you kind of said he was like a farmer. Farmer. Let me, let me ask you a question. What, when did you get married? Do you remember what your wedding day was? Well, there is uh, two types of wedding: the official and the non-official. Okay. Uh, I mean, we got into a relationship right. in 2007, it's like uh, uh, around June. I got okay. there. So three months March. after being down there. No, I I I I, I, I we start talking six. With this new information, the detectives will most likely be doing some digging to see exactly when Herrig met this man and if there is any evidence that she had been any sort of contact with him before the murder of Carl Herrig. Also note that she expects people to believe that a deeply suicidal woman who has just escaped a horrific marriage is perfectly fine with leaping into a new relationship. Months later, we, we found out. We you, were like flirting, flirting. Did you know him before you went to Brazil this time? Is it somebody you knew from your past in Brazil? No, or is no, he, no. You met him as you met him when you got the there? The construction was the first time I saw him. Did he know what happened up here? No, I told him a story. That was probably a deal breaker, I would imagine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I was afraid of telling him the story, so I told him that I was from Rio de Janeiro that was there hiding from my husband that was a police officer that I didn't want to be married to him anymore, and he um, swore me to death, and, and I had to hide. Nobody could know where I was. That's why uh, I was hiding in that, that, uh, the middle of nowhere building a shack in the middle of nowhere so my husband that wanted to kill me wouldn't find me. But after he built that little shack, I had some uh, articles, newspaper articles and some pictures of Carl in a box in that shack. And because he took care of that shack, he saw those papers and he figured out that my story was not exactly the way I, I, I said. He confronted me and I said, 
look is better than in whom I ask too many questions. Uh, you know enough. Uh, because maybe maybe that's not entirely the truth, but if I tell you the truth, you probably not gonna want to talk to me anymore and stop crying. He said, um, try me out. Uh, I think you, you're gonna be surprised. Uh, and then um, I figured that you know, I knew that my story wasn't true, and I took a chance. And so I told him the whole thing. I said, "Look, if you want to leave and never talk to me again, go right ahead. I will understand." He said, "No, no. I I like you more now that you told me the truth." And you're still with him now. That's who you wanted. Uh, that's who you wanted uh, Sean to call to get your property and stuff. Yeah. Right, right. That's yeah. who we called to get this stuff over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, that's good to. to yeah. Something I like to talk. And, and what we'll do is we'll take one more little break before we're done, just to make sure there's nothing. Well, we've sat here with you for quite some time. This is probably the longest interview I've ever done. Yeah. But you're missing a very important well, part. We're not. Listen. We'll listen to you all night. I'm not worried about it. But what I, what, there, there's, I like to ask two things. First of all, if you could, remember we talked about earlier if, if, if the Herring family is going to be able to hear this or see this? Yeah, there was a lot, a lot I, that I haven't said about Carl. Um, I think it's said enough. Ooh, I think yeah. I said enough because if I say more uh, about his character, I'm afraid that uh, it's going to hurt them too much. Well, give you the chance to say whatever you want, just like we said from the start. This is your story, okay? You're the artist here. You can it, baby. It's not uh, um, because it was only a fetus that has no fat. And what hurts me more, if that's the because I was getting into the part that he was um, um, depressed and I want to get him treatment in Brazil because a pilot with mental problems uh, be forced into retirement. He can be a pilot. You know that. You know about the story of the pilot, German pilot, that he was an airplane. Depression, untreated depression. So um, he knew that he had any situation of going to a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist um, he would have to stop flying. So my plan is the worst. I was being his therapist. I was talking to him, getting him to, to cheer up, and at the same try, time trying to get him medicine in Brazil, sneak up medicine, you know, go to Brazil, not sneak up medicine because um, it's, it, 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 you're allowed to bring in medicine, but uh, so he would take medicine without, off the records, without anybody knowing that he was taking uh, psychiatric medication. We've reached another entry in Herrig's long line of inconsistencies. Now she's saying that she would travel to Brazil to get him medication. How is she doing this? Supposedly, he's so controlling that he won't let her pick out her own clothes or food or choose what to watch on TV. But somehow he is fine with her going to another country? No, I wasn't able to, to, to get the medicine from Brazil. I only talked to my father about that. I spoke to my father about getting the, 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 uh, the uh, medication. But I didn't. Uh, I didn't fly to Brazil to get the medication. I was. I was deciding that with Carl. So at one point, I had to tell his parents what was going on. That he was very depressed. So I, I talked to his parents, and we were um, figuring out a plan to help Carl. But at one point, Steve. He didn't like that. He figured that I shouldn't be involving his parents in my marital problems. 
so things were, um, uh, I, I was getting the support I needed because I was, I was alone helping a sick man. It was too much for me. That was getting me uh, mentally uh, uh, sick. Now where does this fall in the time frame of things? That was uh, the last four months. The last four months. So I was talking to his parents. We, we, uh, they were being very supportive, and they were very concerned about him. So um, then Steve got into the picture, and he said, "Don't you ever talk to my parents about the marital problems. Do not ever involve my parents in the marital problems." So that was when I again I was alone with a big problem in my hands. I saw a light at the end of the tunnel with the parents. But once they said, don't solve your own problems, then I was alone again. Then I became very ill because uh, his parents were encouraging me to not take their views. Uh, you gotta, yes, you can wear sneakers. Yes, you can wear clothes, uh, shoes. So his parents even started side with you as well? Yes, yes. You go, you can, that's your own fault because you take the abuse because he doesn't let you uh, 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 wear uh, uh, jackets in the house. You can't put up with that. The lies just keep coming faster. Herrig's in-laws have already told the police that as the relationship deteriorated, her behavior became more and more erratic and that she had even fainted when he talked about the divorce in her presence. Carl's mother specifically told the police who to look for when her son was found. So they start uh, encouraging me to, to stand up for myself. Um, uh, but once uh, they got out of the picture, I didn't feel strong enough to stand up uh, for Carl, you know? So I said, now I'm, I'm in trouble again. He started uh, to dominate me. And I, I was hurting again, and I became very depressed. And I, that's when I tried to kill myself with a gun, with his gun. And then I, I, I got triggered, but I told him about the gun. He got all the guns out of the, the house. So then I tried to kill myself with sleeping pills. Uh, I took sleeping pills, and I, I took the car, and I fell into a pit. Uh, with, uh, I fell with the car into a pit, and then they took me to a hospital, and, and I was unconscious. Um, they saved me, and they're going to release me uh, the next day. They, they're going to release me, and they, they called in the nurse, and they said, Mr. Harry, do you think your wife is ready to go to the house? Uh, and then um, he hesitated a little, um, and I had told him about, um, oh, that's the day when I told him about the gun. He didn't know about the gun yet. Um, I told him, uh, um, that before the sleeping pills, I had tried to kill myself with your gun. Then he said, oh my God, he got really nervous. Then he told the, uh, the nurse, um, I think she should stay at the hospital a couple more days to see if she's really good. And the nurse wanted to know why. And he told the nurse about the gun. And, and then they, they, they committed me to a mental hospital. And I stayed there um, a few weeks. And I said, if you do that, don't tell that nurse, I can go home. You know that all I have is my job. It's tax season. All I have is my job. It's like January. Uh, I'm going to lose my job. I was in the middle of doing an audit for the Salvation Army. And I said, I'm almost done with the audit. Nobody, know, nobody can uh, pick up for my left door. And I'm going to hurt that company, that firm. And I'm going to hurt myself professionally. You know that I love to work. All I do is work. I work seven days a week. 
and I work um, um, 14 hours a day, you know, that I love to work. Just take that away from me, taking everything away from me. Please don't do that. So he felt real sorry. He went to the hospital every day, said how much he was sorry, how much he loved me, but was really angry at what he had done to me. And um, uh, 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 and the psychiatrist, every day we had to meet the psychiatrist. And I started telling to the psychiatrist that I wasn't crazy. He was the crazy person. He should be there, not me. And then they then they thought I was really crazy because every crazy person thinks says that the other person is crazy, that they are normal. Think, things got worse to me. Then uh, I, I they would leave me out of the hospital. Then I got smart. I said, this doctor is crazy. He's, he was crazy. I said, I gotta be smarter than him. Then I changed everything else. I said, no, doctor, you're really right. I'm crazy, you're right, I'm crazy. My husband, he's wonderful, has done nothing wrong to me. I'm the bad one. Now I see everything clear. I'm crazy. Yes, I should be here, but I feel so much better. You can let me go home. But that didn't work so fast. It didn't work so fast. They had to see what was consistent in, in saying that I was the crazy one, <laughs> but I was feeling better, and that worked. It's to be hoped that the doctor was able to see through Herrig's lies and manipulation. Also, bragging to the police about how she tried to lie her way out of a mental hospital isn't helping her credibility. So then he released me. I went back to work, but that day I was fine. And then I Uh, whatever I find that is sick, I, that's 
my life mission to take care of other people. I feel like I'm taking care of my husband because it's a man that has uh, uh, health problems. He, he cannot work. So <clears throat> I feel like I'm taking care of him, like I'm taking care of the animals. So as long as I feel like I'm helpful to somebody, well, that I have a, 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 a reason to, to live. But, but not for me. I don't care if I'm in prison here, in prison in Brazil, uh, if I'm alive, if I'm dead. I'm dead inside. I've been dead since uh, March 12, 2007. I do because I do because it's closure for me. Yeah, we talked about this a lot on the line. And something yeah. that make you feel better is this is probably the last step of closure for his family. Because I know you said you care about his family and you care about what they think. Yeah. So this, this is this is very important. I to just don't well. don't care for Steve because Steve. Mm, I don't like Steve because Steve is is the reason why this whole thing, I would be married to the state. So I don't like Steve. Steve, he wasn't, you know, he didn't do the right thing. When speaking of Steve, Herrig's movements become forceful and more violent. She's clenching up that pen tightly in her fist and slamming it down in a stabbing motion. She gives the impression of not being very emotionally stable. Or his, or his brother. He did a very bad thing. I don't like Steve. I like Paul. I like his mother, his uh, uh, father. I like his, uh, uh, Eve, his daughter. I like uh, Brent, his son. I don't like Steve. Steve was dead. Not intentionally. I understand that was not intentional. But he was impulsive. He he he, he did very big harm. So Steve, I, I had resentment towards Steve. Here's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna take one more little break. Okay? And while we're gone, I want you to think about things that maybe you feel we sat here and listened to for the next couple minutes. Think about that and when we come back in, you are gonna have a chance to tell us that. Right. And we're going to go talk to you. Hey, is there anything else we need to talk about? Yeah. Yes. Sure. All right, first, that all makes sense. Do you need anything else? Any water, any more tissues, anything like that? No, we're good. Okay. break the time is 12 or 9. Okay. We'll be right back, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my pen. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm going to do home to myself. Yeah, I want you to do that. Don't do that here, <laughs> I okay? I won't do that. Don't worry about it. Remember, you said you wouldn't do that as long as you're helping people, and you've been very helpful with us. I don't want to go to hell. thing in just so you knew for 11 years we had our ideas and we had our thoughts what did you think we'll, th we'll tell you well we, we thought a few different things we, we thought about the suicide thing just not in the same oh. just not in the same manner you did oh. maybe leaning over or something like that mm -hmm. yeah the way it was you know, it was just something that came to our mind and we also thought maybe it was a booby trap that somebody opened a door could there have been something tied to the the triggers um, to make, you know, thought of a few yeah, things. To shoot one of us. We thought maybe it was booby traps, so if you opened the door, whoever opened the door would get shot. But whether it was no Carl restraints. or whether it was us. Well, or, right. 
Right, we, we couldn't figure out what it was. They just didn't, they just, it was... But you didn't see the seat? You gotta remember, I'm getting old now. My memory's not what it used to be. So, I can't really say... I don't know. You don't have pictures? I'm not sure. Yeah, but I, I didn't know you were coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is the bottle of uh, the cachaça uh, on the bed. Well, believe me, we'll be going through this case with a fine tooth comb now, trust me. <laughs> um, one other, I guess probably the simplest question that we didn't ask. Instead of killing him, it would have been easier to just get a divorce. I tried, he wouldn't let me. How far did you go? I mean, would you... Did you tell him, you told him you wanted a divorce? <laughs> Almost every day. And what was his story? What was his answer? I love you. I beg you, I'll change. I love you. I love you. I can live with you, most beautiful woman in the world. I love you. I swear I'm going to change. One wife won't, won't accept uh, uh, a man asking for forgiveness. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know, and I, I hadn't tried long enough, only two years. Well, then it's not like I had tried the 10 years. Oh, I already put up with you 10 years. It's not going to work. I have been only two years. So, you know, I had to try a little bit more. So you made this thing yourself? Yeah. What did you use to make a little hole? trace it and then figure out a way to cut yeah. it out. you're going to go into our jail tonight and at some point maybe as early as tomorrow you're, you're going to think you're going to see a judge really for what for your murder charge they, what they'll do is they'll bring, they, like you have a charge but then they will bring you to court and it's a lot different than they're going to take you to court in front of the judge the charge will be read to you in court you'll be told what your rights are some more rights the opportunity to get an attorney so you'll have to go over to court to do that they'll walk you over to court for that now, if by tomorrow morning, once you get an attorney, like we talked earlier, once you get an attorney, then I can't come talk to you. If tomorrow morning, when you wake up, if you want to talk to me, you just ask one of the one of the officers working in there, and I'll come see you. Okay, if there's something else that maybe we forgot tonight, but really, once you have an attorney, then me and you aren't, aren't going to be able to talk to you. Okay? That's just, that's, that's it, cool. Then what will happen is it will be your attorney talking to our attorneys. That, that's how that works. Okay? But, um... I'm going to be honest with you, I'm glad this day came. I never thought in a million years this day would come. Yeah. All right, but you know what I've learned in the last three, four hours? I've learned that this has brought you some closure. It's going to bring his family some closure. And it's going to bring us some closure. So I'm kind of, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that this happened this way uh, in the end. Um, I, appreciate, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate you talking to us. Well, I think we talked about that. It's, it, it's important for you. It's important for the family. It's important for us. I think I Judging Herrig's smiling reaction, it's hard to believe that she fully understands the severity of her situation. She is almost certain to spend the rest of her life in prison, but she acts as if it's nothing more than a parking ticket. And you wanted, you wanted, to, you wanted to tell, you wanted to tell your story, and you got the opportunity. To do that. Your story needed to be heard. There were many things that we didn't know that we did. Now we did, and that's and that's very important. Yeah, for you to understand this man better, you have to know that he was a subscriber to the site Hard Time. That's what he did to me, and he forced me to 
want to show the repeated. It's called Miles High, that is about a um, couple swinging um, pilots with the, with the, with the crew, um, men with men, women with women, um, and that whole dirty thing. And he forced me to watch another TV show called uh, Big Love. Big Love is a man with several wives, and he didn't want me to accept him as a second wife to live with us. Not a wife, but a maid from Brazil to spice up our sex life. tries to end her statement with her as a victim, but all it does is raise questions. How was she able to leave the house to buy the gun? If he was so controlling, how did she have her own bank account? And why did he allow her to send large sums of money to her family? In fact, why hadn't he cut off any contact she had with her father and sister? stop things now. It's 12.24 a.m. It's now the 18th of January, Thursday. And again, you make a statement on your own free will, right? 
-hmm. We told you that you didn't have to talk to us, and you chose to talk to us. Yes. And we went over your constitutional rights under Miranda with you, which you which you understood, signed, and waived, right? Mm -hmm. Chris, I really appreciate it. All right, just sit tight. It's going to help you in anything. It's going to help everybody. It's well, we, help here's what I'm going to tell you. I mean, from from a from a police standpoint, I don't like seeing cases that aren't. Um, just bothering, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, little things like... You, you, you talked it. about that, didn't you? Things that are unfinished bother you. They bo bother us, too. Yeah. Finding, finding, finding yeah. the truth. Now, now, we're we're the that now we understand, now we understand. I told you this thing wasn't far away. I told you earlier. Somebody, uh... I thought about this piece of wood a lot. Didn't figure out the... the, the we had our ideas. That, was, that wasn't one of them. Not that way. Yeah. I, I tried to think uh, about that second gun, and I, I was thinking maybe if the trigger was uh, easier to pull, I, I don't quite under, I remember the reason uh, I want that second gun. In the grand scheme of things, it's, it's, it's not that important, but just something that no, you know, we know about and we want to ask. Something that I it was... Of my mind completely, but because you brought that up, I, I'm asking myself. It, it's not going to change anything, but I, I, I'm forcing myself to try to remember the reason. And I was thinking that had something to do with the trigger being hard, uh, easier to to pull. Because I, I did this after I I wanted to buy the second gun. So I, I, I think that when I did that, that I found that way that I could put the trigger, then I didn't need the second gun anymore. Because this would, would solve the problem. Do, do the trick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. We're yeah. going to stop it. The time is 12.26. Just uh, hang on here. We'll be back to get you, okay? Do you need anything? No. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay. Concluding the interview, Herrig is cuffed and led from the room, where she will await the next step of the legal process. On January 25, 2019, Claudia Herrig was found guilty of aggravated murder and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 28 years. After 12 long years, the family of Carl Herrig finally had some measure of comfort knowing that his killer will be paying for her crime.